Hey everybody, welcome back. If you've been looking at power stations recently, well, you understand how expensive they are. And you might be looking at your budget going, I'll never be able to afford one of those. Well, today, I may have a solution for you. Today, we're taking a look at easy, affordable solar backup. This is the Lissetti battery box. Let's take a look at it. Hey everybody, welcome back. So today we're taking a look at this Lissetti battery box with a thousand watt inverter, DC and AC options, solar charging ports, everything. All you need to do is add a battery. It is compatible with a bunch of different batteries from lead acid, AGM cell, LifePo4, lithium, wet gel cell, anything. This will work with any kind of battery. Today I'm gonna to be using a 100 amp hour um, lithium iron phosphate for it but any size between 70 amp hours and 230 amp hours that will fit into the box will work. Um, it definitely gives you the opportunity to uh, have yourself a power station at a much more affordable price. Now, if you go back in my reviews, you've seen that I've done a couple of other um, more affordable LifePo4 batteries uh, like the Power Queen we're gonna be using today. And um, you understand that now you can get a decent 100 amp hour LifePo4 battery for a good price. But the cool thing about this is, is you can go down to Walmart, buy yourself a deep cycle battery like the 27DC. It'll fit right in here and you'll have a power station without any worries at all. It's already, all the work's already been done for you inside. This is really what changes power stations when you're able to sort of build your own but not build your own. You do have the option for charging in here. You do have an MPPT charge controller inside here. It's very, very nice. It's a 10 amp input uh, MPP charge controller. You got all your 12 volt and USB options on the front. You do have a decent display here. You have a main cutoff switch, okay? I'm gonna turn you on the side here and show you all of the output and input ports. These may look a little weird to you. These are Anderson power poles, believe it or not. They're just higher amp hour Anderson power poles. You have 175 input and output, 175 amp input and output here. Mainly what you would use this for was say, jump starting your vehicle. So if you get the larger Anderson power poles, you can use this to jump start your vehicle. The top and the bottom here are 50 amp input and output. Okay, the 10 amp solar, this is connected directly to the charge control, this black one up top here. Okay, now you can use a 50 amp adapter. Now it doesn't come with it. I'm gonna show you what I purchased on Amazon for like seven bucks. Right here, that's all you need, okay? This will connect to most any solar panel, and this just literally plugs in there just like an Anderson power pole. So it's a very simple operation. The bottom here is another 50, input, 50 amp input or output on the panels, okay? On the front here, like I said, you've got your PD ports in there and your um, DC, I'm sorry, your OC 3.0 USB. Same there. Another neat thing about this is it has an on and off switch. This little button here will turn that on and off when the battery's in there, even if your inverter isn't on. You do have a regulated 12 volt output. And on the side here is your 1000 watt inverter. Now I'm gonna give you a look at the guts of this unit because it is very open and easy to see. Um, you have a fan here and a fan on the back. Um, what I notice when running this is that does give it excellent cross ventilation so your components will not get hot inside, okay? Now, unlike other models on the market, all these Anderson ports are recessed into the body so you won't have any possibility of damage. The only thing that could get hurt is this, but generally, if you're putting this in a location, like I'm gonna have a location out here where I'm gonna keep this with the battery in it, and I'm gonna have a solar panel on it, charging it at all times. So if you have a place that you're putting this, you don't have anything sticking out here that could get bumped or damaged. So let me quickly take the top off here and show you the guts of the unit. The bottom here is just an empty battery box where you're gonna put your battery. Let me show you the inside and show you how everything works. All right, now before we begin, I wanna show you everything in here. Um, I would say this has the hallmarks of an extremely high quality made homemade unit. Um, it's really, really well done. Everything is fused, everything is on bus bars, everything's nice and neat. You do have your MPPT charge controller right in the center here. This is your 1000 watt inverter, pure sine wave inverter. Um, there is a piece of plastic over it so it doesn't get all interfered with the battery or anything. These of course are your battery terminals, leads that will connect to your battery. And when I set this up to test it, make sure it worked, um, I know I was like, wow, these are thick wires. I don't think they're gonna fit under there, you know, for my battery. I connected my battery, I put this on top, and the weight of this 
this top here just easily put it right down there and nowhere near any kind of problems or anything we do have extra hardware i'll show you the hardware it comes with in a sec these are your fans over here and over here okay these are your 12 volt ports that's your main disconnect okay this is your display and these are all your different anderson large anderson power ports so it is really wired up very very well very neat inside and that is the whole unit inside there that's the guts of the entire unit based on the inside there so let's drop a battery in the box i'll show you how you wire it up and then we'll go to test it out with some high drain devices as well as show you what it looks like when it's charging up all right your first step is going to be putting your battery in the box now i did notice something with this power queen um, on the edges here there is a spot where it kind of doesn't sit straight doesn't affect performance at all it's just not sitting straight in the box i don't really worry about that i'm not really worried about it it does fit in there perfectly flush so there's no issues you do have a velcro kind of a i guess you could call it a seat belt <laughs> where you can put this in here and tuck it down in there nice and secure so that's not going anywhere that's in there really good now the next thing we're going to do is connect our wires to it i'm going to turn this sideways and show you how simple that is all right so your next step is going to be taking off the screws off of your terminals there and you're really just going to take these wires and kind of twist and turn them in there and um, like i said believe it or not this will actually do pretty well once you get it in there i want to get it started and then i'll flatten it out and i'll show you what this looks like once it's fully connected I just want to make sure it's connected on there good enough where it's not going to snap off and hit that one. I have the other one over here, so we're going to put that one on, and then we're going to adjust the cables. Then I'll show you what it looks like and give you a basic operation of how this works. It's very, very simple to do. So let me finish this up, and I'll bring you back again. All right, so there you go. It's all hooked up. I do have the battery main switch on. I just wanted to make sure everything was functional. Um, we'll explain the modes and the on and off button. This is pretty much what's going to power your... Um, your uh, inverter on the end here you can turn that off okay this will always work you're just going to simply push that button and turn these little on these little guys on here so they'll always work i do like the fact that you can turn those off however so you don't have that parasitic drain on the battery with those lights being on all the time i hate that when they do that now if i wanted to say i heard something weird going on in here maybe something was malfunctioning very simple take the switch push it to off boom that cuts everything off the whole thing is off let me get into the parts here really quick. I hope you can see this bit down here. We do have some mounts on here. If you want to mount the box. We do have some um, pieces here, uh, little uh, screws here, that will go down in the sides here and bolt this down. And that's what we're going to do because this is going to be a permanent installation for me. I'm going to bolt it down, and it comes with a little Allen key as well. I'm going to bolt this down and get it all set up. And then we're going to test out some devices. Now, I know... This battery sat for about a month, okay? So I know it's not topped off, but that's okay because we're going to be popping it out there uh, with a solar panel and topping it off. Now, another point to remember, um, today is basically snowy and overcast. So no, I'm not going to get this thing fully charged in 20 minutes, okay? It's going to take a while. <laughs> so that's why I want to show it to you. Um, we're going to be using an EcoFlow 100 watt panel, which I have down over here on the floor. And we're going to run that into there and top it off. Now, I have not seen, now we're going to see when we do this, but I have not seen a way to see what I'm getting in. You're only going to see the battery going up and down when it's charging. I would have liked to be able to see that. Yes, I could put a meter in line and do that, but um, I, I have not seen it yet. Now, maybe it's possible that I will see that, but... Um, I haven't seen it yet so i'm going to see if that does that with this it would be nice to have a display of what's coming in it does display what's going out that i can tell you for a fact but it would be nice to see that so i'm going to see if this has maybe improved or since that review has changed if not no big deal we all know the solar panel works okay so let's get this connected up and we'll test some devices on it and see how it performs all right so we got everything battened down tightened up one thing i did forget to do when i did it off camera was put the little boots over the uh, positive and negative terminals on the battery um, i went and screwed them together closed up the top and i was like oops anyway they're there for safety so it's a good idea to put them on and i did i took everything apart and redid it so what we're going to do is quickly turn this on okay and you will see the display now there are two ways to do this display you will notice a mode one and mode two here you'll notice it's cycling through uh different modes here so what you want to do if you want this to cycle through your dc voltage ac voltage ac watts um, what you do is you push down and you hold this for six seconds and there you go so now this will cycle through and show you your wattage 
you know, your voltage, your AC volts, AC watts. Now, if you want to get it out of that mode want mode 2, you simply just push that button again. And you can choose what mode you want to be in while you're doing this, okay? To turn the inverter on and off, it's as simple as pushing that button. That's it. Um, you will not hear fans on initial startup. If you're drawing a lot of current, the fans will automatically turn on. So what we're going to do is start it off with a um, device known to draw a whole lot of current. And I'm not going to go high on this because I know high is over 1,000 watts, and this is rated for 1,000 watts. So what we're going to do is go with your, get in through here, AC watts. I'm going to cycle through it as I'm doing this and see how it works. So there's my plug. Okay, We're going to plug this in on the side here, and it's on. So you're seeing, let's see, 685 watts. Okay, That's what this is drawing. Now, it will work for a second. See, it is over. I don't want to push it. It was well over that. I put it back down to the medium. So it will work over that. It will show you your battery levels. Let's go through the modes again. Ooh, wow, that's evil. 12.4. <laughs> There's your AC voltage. And those are your watts coming out. 666, 664, 662. There's your watts coming out. So... It definitely will do something that's a high drain device. What I want to do now is brew a cup of coffee with this thing and see if it can, you hear the fans going? I don't know if you heard them, but they were going while this was running. So that's good to know that the automatic fans will kick on once you get to a certain point. What I want to do is do a little coffee with this and see how well it does. Now coffee makers, you may not know it, but coffee makers draw a ton of power. Um, I have a little curry Keurig clone type thing that we're gonna we're on a little coffee out here and see how that does. All right, so we got this little guy out here. We have our display on. I hope this is going to work. We've turned it on. 780, you hear the, you hear the fans going. Okay. So this is gonna start brewing the water. And when it starts brewing it, it'll, it'll drop down. Right now it's heating the water. That's why it's very high like that. Let's run through the modes again and see where we're at. 12.4 in the battery, 12.3 about there. 110 voltage 784 on that so now again if you want if I wanted to swing through all those modes I could very easily do that by pushing the mode and holding it about five or six seconds and it would go through each one and show you but I kind of like this because we're checking out how how hot it gets and how much uh, not how hot it gets but how much energy it draws and you can see it's doing a pretty darn good job there it's holding that no problem you do hear the thing in here now I'm going to demonstrate this quickly you see how that works we're going to try these out in a second um, while this is working, we're going to try this out and plug it in here and uh, see how well so it I'll charges up. a quick second to show you. You'll notice it drops to zero. This is still on. What it's doing, see it's cycling back up again. What it's doing is heating up the water and it will drop from zero back up to zero back up as it heats up the water and then eventually it will spit it out in here. Now, of course, during an emergency or disaster, there's going to be far more efficient ways to make your coffee without running one of these machines. And here you go. It's going to start any second here. There you go. But it's nice to see that it does work. And you see it's drawn nothing now. It's just naturally spinning out of there. So let's give the USB stuff a try out here and the 12-volt stuff a try out. And uh, then we're going to show you what it looks like when it's getting charged up. All right, so I know the fan works. I know the 12-volt um, output works there. And it's not drawing. It's drawing like maybe four or five watts. This is a noisy fan. Please excuse it. <laughs> and I have my tablet here we're going to plug in. I want to show you what the tablet looks like when it's plugged in here. I know it's charging. It definitely turns on when it starts to charge. There you go. So it is charging. It is at 64%. We're just going to leave that there. Now, um, there is mention on the website of an app for this. But I believe it requires an external monitor to connect via Wi-Fi to this particular device. I did not see anything when scanning for Wi-Fi coming out of this box. So don't get confused with that. That is a separate app. I'm going to turn that fan off because it's kind of loud and annoying. And I haven't gotten into the price on this yet. So I don't want to make people wait all the way to the end or click the link to see the price. Um, this was $198. These are now on sale for $168. So literally, you could go to Walmart and buy a DC 27 type battery, you know, a 12 volt battery. You could um, get yourself this box for $168 and have yourself a thousand watt solar generator, power station, whatever you want to call it, 
that easily all right get yourself an inexpensive panel get yourself the adapter like i showed you before it's buried over here behind the coffee and i don't want to spill my coffee get yourself an adapter and you're in business you're in the solar business for way cheaper than you would have thought so what we're going to do now is i'm going to put the panel outside and again as i said it's a very very cloudy overcast it was kind of snowing in certain parts of town here today and i am in rural nevada so that's kind of unusual so everybody gets excited <laughs> but i am going to put it outside and i'm going to show you what we can do with solar on this just so you know this is what we're dealing with now it does look like the clouds are starting to move away a little bit so we'll get a little bit of solar i want to bring you quickly down to the panel if you're interested in the panel i'm using it is there we go an ecoflow 100 watt rigid panel i did make the feet myself there so that's what we're going to be using we're going to bring everything inside here and run wires from that to the uh, power bank and we're going to see uh, how much power it brings in so in order for me to show you that this is actually charging being that the display doesn't show it i wanted to show you the uh charge controller you see it's blinking that means i'm getting sun in okay it's blinking the green blinking and then it will go to fully green when it's fully charged so it is getting sun in this is the back of course and i did open it up for you these were the boots i was talking about before that i forgot to put on so it is working i don't know if you can if i darken it up a little bit if you can see it i can't see through the monitor um it's kind of as as dull dark as oh there we go now you can see it so it is working. You do need to turn the main power switch on on the front to charge this up. So what I'm going to do is leave that panel out there. And again, like I said, you can see it's a very cloudy, overcast day. So this is not going to be super efficient, but it will give you an idea of how well this will work. And I'm going to leave this out here for a little bit. We're going to try it out and see uh, just how much uh, we can get a charge off this. It was showing 13.1 when I started it up. So... Let me flip it over and we will uh, show you what it's at now. It's been about five minutes, so I doubt it's gone up all that much. And then we'll finish up the video once this is fully charged up. Well, as you can see, it's already gone up 1% because it was 13.1. Well, there we go. 13, it's, it's flirting with 13.3. So, yeah, I would have liked to be able to see, as you can see, I go through the modes here. I'm not seeing any kind of amount that's coming in. You know what I mean? I would have liked to have seen that, but I can see on the charge control and I can tell by the battery monitor that I'm doing okay and I'm getting the charge in. So it is up to 13.3 almost now. So we're definitely doing a good job. Let's give this about, oh, I don't know, 45 minutes. And uh, we'll come back and see uh, how topped off we can get it. So even in this crummy weather, we managed to get it up to 13.8 volts with that uh, 100 watt panel. Again, this is what we're looking at for... Uh, for clouds out here so it's not going to be an easy day to charge it but i am very pleased with the performance so far what i'm going to do is bring it back up at the table i'm going to give you some final information on it some specs and i'm going to give you the link where you can pick one of these up so definitely good to get back inside it is cold out there <laughs> but uh as you can see very simple to operate there's really no construction in this all the guts and the brains are in the top part of this um box here you just drop a battery in and again it's compatible with the life po 4 lead acid agm gel lithium wet gel uh, anything any kind of battery that you can fit in here between 70 amp hours and 230 amp hours will definitely work this does have the two 12 volt outlets with 10 amp fuses dual usb port four 50 amp anderson style outlets that can be used as outputs or inputs and again the 175 amp amp hour uh amp anderson outlet that could be used as a jump starter and on top of all that it's already built for you thousand watt pure sine wave inverter on the side which we saw work with two very heavy draw items and it seems to be doing its job even the charging worked well my only disappointment like i said was there was no way to monitor how your charging is going even if they had put the charge control light somewhere out here or something like that so you could tell i actually had to take off the top and look because i wanted to make sure i had the polarity right um i did it was fine but i just wanted to make sure so uh, that's my only real complaint or maybe a way to get the display that will show you the input that you're getting in now granted i did not have a lot of sun to work with today barely any um it took it from 13.1 to 13.8 in about 45 minutes to an hour really not bad um again it's a decent battery in there so you know it's got the mpp charge controller the maximum power point tracking charge controller so it will get the most out of your batteries um and your panels to make sure that your batteries get charged up very very nicely i did want to quickly show you the manual for this it's a very simple manual to to understand and use tells you all about your different anderson plugs 
Tells you how to use the on off button, the uh, multifunction display. Really, really simple. Gives you all the information on the USB ports. Okay. And really, I really um, am very impressed with the price point and the, um, the ease of use on this. So if you guys want a power station and you've been looking at these Blue Eddies and this, you know, EcoFlow and all these others for thousands of dollars and you just want something that's going to run, say, a small backup refrigerator, charge your devices, maybe run your TV or radios or even ham radio gear, um, definitely a good way to get it going. And 168 bucks on sale. I mean, you really can't beat that. So this is going to live over by my other solar stuff over there on a little table. I do have the panel next to it. What I'm going to do is on a sunny day, I'm just going to leave the panel out there and let it roll. And we'll be using this a little bit more in the channel. I think this is going to kind of take over the dedicated role of charging my uh, my e-bike when I need it topped off because it's a whole lot easier to get my e-bike plug in here than to unplug something from the wall. So and that's where my e-bike is over that way too. So I think that's going to be its, its main job. But it will be nice to have this as a backup power station. And like I said, I'm going to be converting that table over there to more of a backup radio table. So that's how that's going to work as well and having a little extra power there. Hey, that can't hurt. So it's Lissetti power box with a thousand watt inverter. Really cost effective, really easy easy to put together yourself even if you know nothing about electronics you literally drop a battery in and connect two wires and that's it seal up the the plugs and then you're ready to go the on and off switch is real simple modes are very very easy to use and your little uh adapters here are ready for any of your devices so i thank you guys for watching i will have a link down below where you can pick this up remember it was on it was 198 it's on sale for 168 uh, below that's my Amazon affiliate store. If you guys are interested in just helping out the channel, you can shop that link. Uh, you don't have to buy anything in the store. Just click the link and shop as you normally would. But we do have a lot of our cool gear that you will see in the channel in, in there. Below that's our freeze dried wholesalers link. My link will save you 15%. If you're looking to get stocked up on some emergency freeze dried food, now is the time to do it while well, he's got a lot of stuff in stock before the panic starts. And my link will save you 15% off any item on the site. When you go to check out, you'll see your 15% savings right there. Below that, are my patriot supply link that's prepare with iridium.com down there you'll find all sorts of my specialized packages for my particular site we have a three-month kit that is two hundred dollars off a four-week kit that's fifty dollars off and a bunch of other stuff if you click on the links of the food and the items you'll see all the rest of the stuff that's on that site and underneath that's our thrive life freeze-dried food store if you guys are interested in trying thrive life it is amazing, clean, freeze-dried food, so definitely check them out. Those are the three that I trust with my own personal health and eating is uh, freeze-dried wholesalers, My Patriot Supply, and Thrive Life. So definitely give them a check, and now's a good time to start thinking about stocking up on food. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching. We are going to have more videos on this, so stay safe and stay prepared.